Alex Sabenak, and we are testing the effectiveness of different facial cleansers in removing bacteria from the face. So a problem that teenagers struggle with is acne, and we realized that bacteria is a major cause of acne. And we thought that traditional facial cleansers will be more effective than just using regular water to remove bacteria from the face. And we tried to control our variables throughout, and Sarah's going to tell you more about that now. So we started off by, we always explained to you that we had a sterile environment, and then we swabbed using the same method before and after. So we always swabbed in the A section, the swab from your forehead into the A plate, the B from the left cheek, and so on. So we would always compare the two. So we would do that before we washed your face, and then after as well. So then we would see the decreased percentage. And a graph, and we have a graph shown here, so the water actually increased in bacteria. New Eugenia did a very good job, and it had a severe decrease in bacteria. Olay and Cetaphil both did a good job in decreasing the bacteria, but not nearly as well as um, the Neutrogena. So Eva's going to tell you more about that. So as Sarah said, Neutrogena was the most effective cleanser. It was able to reduce bacteria by 71%. Olay and Cetaphil reduced by 39% and 22%. And water actually increased the amount of bacteria by 19%. So we did some more research on to why Neutrogena was so su successful. And we realized that Neutrogena actually had some ingredients in it that the other cleansers lacked, including glycerin 7 and sodium cocoa sarcosinate, which happen to be cleansing agents that help remove bacteria from the face. So hopefully we're thinking about making our own cleanser and we're going to use those ingredients in our new one. Thank you. Okay, so hi, my name is Hannah Sweeney. I'm a senior here at Hoffington High School. Uh, this year I worked with ambient noise or sound pollution on ghost shrimp, which is a lab simulation for krill. Uh, with this, we are trying to test the, how the food population of krill would affect the whales. The whales, in turn, their feces help reduce carbon dioxide in our environment. If we have too much carbon dioxide in our environment, the emissions will heat up our environment, the global warming, um, melting our polar caps, and drowning out our cities across the world and this will cause uh, detrimental change to the human race and this is why we need to save the whales. Hi, my name is Callie and I'm a sophomore at the high school and my project is music's effect on visual spatial memory. And what I did is I tested different genres of music and saw how it affected someone's memory for memorizing like locations of things. My name is Bronwyn Pappaspires and I worked on supramolecular photosensitizers which are a chemical that um, energizes oxygen to kill um, harmful bacteria and envelop viruses such as Zika, HIV, influenza, as along with various bacteria. And it can be used in hospitals and in the agricultural field. There's plenty of applications for them. Um, my name is Parima Sharma and I'm a junior. And what we've done with these supermolecular photosensitizers is we tested them in the light and in the dark. And what we found is that they kill bacteria more significantly in the light than in the dark. So my project was on the um, quality of sleep and how it affects your cognitive well-being. And me and my partner, um, Priya, we decided to try to create an app that would track your sleep and see the relationship between electronic usage and sleep. Um, we tried to create the app using HTML and CSS coding, but that ended up not working. So we decided to continue this project next year, and eventually we'll start testing on people once we have the app created. Hi, I'm Vinay Gotham, and for my project, I was using Daphnia Magna to monitor water toxicity. So water, the, the experiment that I did is an example of a bioassay. A bioassay is an experiment where you take an organism and you put them into different concentrations and you see how they react. So the organism that I used was Daphnia magna. Daphnia magna is a freshwater crustacean found in parts of North America, South America, Eurasia, and even in some parts of Africa. So what I did is I took six samples all around the Metro West region and I put these Daphnia into all these environments and I wanted to see how they would react. Two of my samples resulted in the Daphnia dying way far more ahead than all the other samples, and that gave me good evidence to say that these two samples have toxic soil in them that's harming the environment along with humans, aquatic animals, and, all, and in nature in general. Hi, my name is Amanda Hansen, and I did a project about how uh, smoke affects bean plants. For my project, 
I split up a few sets of beans and I introduced smoke to one of the sets. I introduced the fresh air to one of the other sets of beans and I um, was going to see how the smoke affects the one set of beans. In my experiment, the uh, smoke made was very was very detrimental to the beans development, and it very it slowed down the development a lot. I'm Sydney. I'm Tess, and we did our project on different levels of BPA in various water bottles when they've been in a warm environment for a period of time. All right. What did you find? Um, we found that there wasn't any BPA in any of them but it might have been because our test wasn't sensitive enough to the small amounts of BPA. Hi, my name is Sophie, and for my project, I was investigating the effects of runoff nutrients on coral reefs, and I put a few coral reefs into two tanks, and I added some pesticides and fertilizers to one of the tanks, and I recorded the change in color and change in height of the corals and compared it to some healthy corals in the other tank. Yeah, so uh, my project is on as to why why the honeybees, why the bats, and why the monarch butterflies are dying. What's the, what's like what's the main reason? So I visited a beekeeper for some information, and he told me um, a bunch of stuff about them and showed me how we have brought in this mite called the varroa mite, and this varroa mite has infected many of many of uh, almost all the colonies. Um, in one year, it wiped all the colonies out, all the natural wild honeybees. So in one year, they were all wiped out. What it does is it feeds on the larvae of them, and it then, a, a, well, damages the immune system to the point of where the, the bees are like vulnerable to other like bacteria um, that's found in the colony or anywhere else. So with the with like they basically had the nutrients sucked out of them. Now they're exposed to bacteria, so in about one week the colony dies. It kills a colony, a whole hive in like one to two weeks. So, uh, and then pesticides is also another large factor for them because pesticides are becoming more, more and more powerful. So, um, and each year they kind of like build up like layer upon layer, and they go up through the roots of the plants and into the, into the fruit or the pollen of the plant. So then the bees get that, and then once the bees get that, then they'll bring that back to the colony, and then the whole colony gets it. So um, that's bad too. Also, not to mention that that also gets in the fruits that we eat, and that there's enough pesticide in one kernel of corn to kill um, 10,000 honeybees. So yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, for the bats, um, the, the bats are, um, dying because of us. Uh, it's like a, it's like a fungus. It's called a white nose syndrome because it, it's uh, seen visibly on their nose most of the time. Sometimes it's on their wings, but it's usually on their nose. And it's because it, usually it just ends up attacking like physically the bee. It's um, the bee, the bat itself. And um, once it attacks it, it weakens its immune system too, to the point of like I mean not weakens it but um, changes it or confuses it to the point of like where the immune system starts to actually attack the bat itself, and then the bat ends up killing itself, or it'll be hibernating and it'll wake up because the fungus itches its nose, and then it'll wake up and it'll be hungry, but it'll be in the middle of the winter so there's no place to go so it just ends up starving to death. Um, and lastly, the butterflies um, is the most simple reasoning behind it. The butterflies are dying because um, companies like uh, Monsanto um, produce lots of herbicides for farmers. And when they do that, these herbicides are placed all over their crops. But this like gets run off and like affects milkweed, which is the one and like main, basically the only plant that the monarch butterfly in specific eats. So without that, once it kills off the milkweed plant, the butterflies just start starving to death. And they're migrating like all the way down to Mexico and uh, California. So with that in mind, they need the food, but there's nothing to eat, so they end up starving to death too. So yeah, the uh, ultimate answer was that it's uh, our fault. Um, 
I was trying to figure out whether it was natural or if it was us. Yeah, it's us. <laughs>